Okay, today I'm going to do a little lecture on the Art of Mint, the commentary from chapter 10 of They Say, I Say. I have page numbers in here, but remember mine's from the third edition. Um, I also want to make a comment that I, in um, putting this together, I noticed that when I googled the Art of Meta Commentary, there were actually a number of professors who had done presentations on this chapter. You are welcome to look at what they have done also. I think they did really great work and um, explained things maybe in a different way that will also help you to understand this. Um, by the way, they didn't just do it on this chapter, but on many chapters of this book. So a lot of book and then tried to explain it. So I would look at any of those. I think those are great. Though I will tell you in this particular lecture I'm giving, at the end I have a bonus. I'm not going to ruin the surprise, but in addition to talking about the art of commentary, I will talk about um, something else that rele is relevant only to my students. So, okay. <clears throat> Let's go to what meta commentary is. It's probably a word you've never heard before. And um, this isn't, I don't know quite how to introduce it. So um, I found someone, Pat Thompson, who gave this definition, right? A narrative which directs the reader's attention to the text purpose and positioning. So it helps guide your reader. You know, it tells you exactly the reader what to think. I think that was kind of helpful. Um, Graf and Birkenstein, their definitions are in these three right here. You know, they call it a Greek chorus, which I did not find at all helpful. For me, it's helpful. I think I've read about Greek choruses, but I've never seen one. And I assume that most of my students have never even heard of one before, and let alone seen one. So I don't think it's terribly a helpful um Definite helpful definition. Then they talk about made to compare it to a voiceover in a movie, which I think is a good one, right? You, you're watching a movie and you're seeing certain scenes, and then a voice comes in and tells you how to interpret those scenes, and quite frankly, ties everything together, like um, helps you to maybe read or explain a character, or explain why we went from this scene to another scene, or I think that is a pretty good explanation of what meta commentary is. Um, they also, there's an illustration in the chapter that says two texts joined at the hip. So I have this illustration on the right of the monkeys, the sock puppets, um, put together. And the idea is one of the monkeys here is the one with the text, the original text, and then there's always right next to it another text commenting on that text, right? And then the last one that I found um, most helpful when I was looking up how definitions of meta commentary is just meta means the same thing. So meta commentary is commentary on the commentary, just like metaphysics is physics of the physics. Okay. I thought that was interesting. So let me give you an example. So <clears throat> Commentary is what you are saying about a topic, right? That's basically all the essays you write are commentary about a particular topic, right? So if the topic was the pandemic that we're living through, right? This is based on uh, somebody's in our class is writing about the pandemic and it's, it has a couple of ideas in here, right? This pandemic has had a significant influence on every part of our life. People have been filled with confusion and fear and sadness. Without a doubt, our local and regional leaders are taking this very seriously. Skip down. At this time, the mayor is making sure everyone stops panicking by giving them hope and letting us know he's trying to everything he can to stop this pandemic. Okay, so those are some comments on the topic of the pandemic. Okay, so meta commentary is also what you are saying, but it's what you're saying about your writing or your argument. So... In that paragraph, the commentary, there are several ideas, multiple ideas. And it's hard to know as a reader, well, which one should I be focusing on? Where is this argument going? You've made this commentary, this comment about the pandemic, about people uh, and influencing everything, scaring people, and then leadership. Well, where should I focus my attention? Because you've mentioned several things. So meta-commentary helps you do that. So 
Here's one of the templates that I got from Graf and Birkenstein. My goal here is to emphasize that, you know, and then I go on as overwhelming as living through a pandemic has been, our local leaders are trying very hard to help us do this calmly and carefully. Okay, so what I'm trying to tell my reader here is, here's where I want you to focus. That is meta commentary, right? I've written my ideas, now I'm telling you where to focus. I'm commenting on, on my argument itself, I'm commenting on my writing and what I'm doing. So I thought all the templates were really nice, giving lots of ideas about how to do it. Um, so I'll go on and hopefully get back. Okay, so why do we do meta commentary? These are just direct quotes from the text, right? The two main things it does is it clarifies and elaborates. So the three quotes I have are all from the same page about clarifying. I thought these were amazing and so true. The basic idea here is that writing is difficult. Not just difficult to do, but when you try to communicate with another human being and all you have is words on a page or words on a screen, that can be quite difficult. If you're communicating face to face, it can sometimes be difficult. Think of all the misunderstandings you've had in your lifetime in conversations when you got mad about something that the other person never meant. It's hard enough when you can read someone's face, when you can ask them to repeat what they said, when you can state what you wanted to say again, when you can look at their body language, you can listen to their tone, right? That's hard enough. But if you're doing it on a page with just words, it can be so much harder. Communication is difficult, right? And so meta commentary helps. It helps clarify, right? Let me explain exactly what I want. I just said what I wanted to say, but I'm going to restate it now in an even clearer way. I'm going to tell you exactly what I was thinking, right? So I might use um, something like, um, sorry, I may say something like, okay, so what I really mean is this, or in other words, I'm trying to say this, or ultimately my goal is to demonstrate this. Those are the templates um, they have. Just let me clarify what I've said because no matter how straightforward you are, your readers are not going to get everything unless you clarify. So put some meta commentary in. The other big help is it helps you to elaborate, right? So some templates to do that is, you know, in other words, to put it another way, um, let's see. But even more important, or another example of this is, right, something like that. So there are lots of templates that will help you, but it helps you develop and even say have more to say. So most of us, this essay is quite short. We have so many sources. We have lots to say. You're not worried about filling four pages. In your college career, you're going to worry sometimes, do I have enough to say? If you insert, if you insert a meta commentary, you will always have enough to say. So my suggestion is you should have one meta commentary per page. That's just a rough, if it's every page and a half, that's fine. So in your four page paper, if you had three pieces of meta commentary, that would be awesome. In general, we're not going to put our meta commentary in the intro or conclusion. We're going to save it is a kind of meta commentary to tell someone so what or um, why, who cares. That is a form of meta commentary, but we're going to save that form for the intro and conclusion. When the body paragraphs, you're going to um, use uh, some other form, one of these other templates to just, you know, halfway through the paragraph, stop and explain, right? So I've just been talking about these issues of the pandemic, let me stop right now and go back and explain what my point is, where I'm headed, right? So that's the example uh, that we have. So that's a suggestion. Again, a rough guide is one meta commentary um, per page. Now, we talked about this from the very beginning, I think, maybe not, I saw you so for such a short time. But I really believe this comment here, that you've got to have a good title. Titles are important. T 
titles are a form of meta commentary that I think are key because without it, as this quote says, essays with vague titles, like when you say essay one, that's vague, or you put at the top, uh, pandemic, coronavirus, that's your title, super vague. That sends a message that you have simply not bothered to reflect on what you're saying and you're uninterested in guiding me, the reader. And when you do that, if you're uninterested, I think, well, then why should I be interested? So I think titles are super important. I think what I've said in class over and over, or in lectures, not in class, in these lectures is your title should represent your thesis, the argument you're trying to make. You should tell your readers right up front, this is what I'm arguing. Not Coronavirus is not an argument. Pandemic, not an argument. Immigration, not subway system, not an argument. You have to say what you're going to argue. Um, because the other thing they do, the second bullet, not as big, important also, is the titles try to get your reader to read the rest of the article. Now, because this is an academic classroom, I am going to read whatever you write. <laughs> so even if your title is terrible, vague, or gives me nothing at all, I'm still going to read it. But titles are super important in the world because that is all that people have to try to get other people to read their article. So it's super important. So you tell the reader, this is what I'm going to be talking about and get them interested. I think I told you that I am um, in my church about 10 years, 15 years ago, there was a man here who, um, so I knew him, he worked for the New York Times and his whole job was to come up with catchy titles um, on the sports page to get people to read the article about the sports, the specific story they were writing about sports. So I just went today and looked through some newspapers and um, put down some names of the of some titles. And I think you can see from reading the titles, you get a pretty good idea what the person is going to argue, right? It's pretty clear. I have an idea that in the first article, they're going to talk about Florida easing up the restrictions on people's leaving their homes and opening businesses, right? It's pretty clear. Um, um, in the second one, it talks about Zoom in the classroom and how that does not replace an actual classroom. I'm, just, I'm sure you all are experiencing that. And the last one just tells us exactly what they're going to be talking about, right? They, the, it's the topic, but also their point of view. Okay, so that's the lecture on meta commentary. Super important. Why why we have to have good titles for all of our essays, and why we have to include comments throughout the essay to guide our reader. But in addition, you get a bonus topic about the annotated bibliography because that is due in ten days, and I just wanted to give you a heads up, a little bit more information. Remember also, a week from today, we're going to do what a peer review um, next, uh, just lost the date, that's why I'm hesitating. We're going to do a peer review for the Tuesday, the 12th, which means you're going to send your annotated bibliography to a, one of the people in the class. They're going to look over it and respond to you, send you an email back, giving you just general feedback. I've given I have some specific instructions about that that I will post um, in Blackboard. But I wanted today to talk a little bit through the a sample annotated. I just found this on the internet. Here's a sample one. And I just wanted to go through what's on an annotated bibliography. So you can't read it very well, which is kind of okay, because what I'm more interested in is you can see what it looks like on the page, right? So on the top right hand, you can see it has a page number. You don't have to have your name, but you have to have a page number um, there. And then on your left at the top, you have all your student information, your name, my name, the class name, maybe the date is fine. Then we have the title. It's centered. It just says annotated bibliography. It's the first, the important words are capitalized. Nothing's bold. Everything is double spaced. So from the, you know, from the time you have the date here until you right here, it's just the same spacing as between here and here, and the same spacing between this and this, and the same spacing between the end of this paragraph and the beginning of the next entry, right? It's all double spaced. The way you know you've started a new entry is that this one 
is over to the left, right? It's left justified. It starts over here, and then everything else is indented. One. That's what an annotated bibliography um, does. So you have the full MLA citation right here, and then you start summarizing, and uh, everything is double spaced. Here's another example again from the internet, and I all the arrows, look at all these arrows, um, whoever put this up, they were doing the same thing, right? So you have the full citation at the top, right? That's in one color to give you, and again, it starts at the left, and then everything after this, you go to the end, you hit enter or return at the end of this line, and then you um, use your indent button, and I don't have that to show you, but you indent button in um, somewhere on your uh, word processing. And you indent here, you give me the full thing, right? We have the author's name, the title, the editor, if you have one, where it was originally published, the, the company that published it, or the university that did the year and the pages, right? Then you just start off by who this person is, right? And who the author is, that talks about mentioned the methods they use, and then his qualifications, right? Author. An audience and then you summer the summary of what is happening in the article and then and these are really important you evaluate right the work compare it maybe to something else and, and then here at the last part a sentence a two that says how this helps your research right how this compares how this evaluates if this is good how does it compare to something else and then how this helps your research right that's what an entry is going to look like, and then the next one is going to look, they look like this, the ink colors all the same, this is just meant to see, help you to see the parts, and then you just start the next one, and clear over to the left, left justification. So that's what they look like, and, and uh, so you have time to look over this, I'll post uh, the PowerPoint presentation also. You can also type in Google, um, annotated bibliography, examples in MLA, and you should be able to see some of them also. Um, but uh, that will be due a week from today. Yay. Before we end, we do a quick recap. So next week, or this will be done Thursday. Next Tuesday, we'll do some peer review of the annotated bibliography. And then we'll turn that in after that.